A, a statement that I am live. Let's see if we are live here. We are the bottom of the first with Isaiah pitching. Alright, looks like maybe now I'm up again. All right, I appreciate you joining us for take two of the Jackrabbits stream. And we'll see if this one works. I just lost all internet for a little bit, folks. I'm not sure what was going on with Verizon. We go to the bottom of the first. Jackrabbits are uh, got three in the top of the first. I think uh, hopefully everybody got to see Gianni's home run. Uh, and then we had uh, four batters up after that, or five batters up after that, leaving two runners on. Um, and Isaiah hits that ball right to Jabrell, who, who catches it in the outfield and loses his glasses. That's what came off, his glasses. I thought that was the ball. Yes. Yes. So Jabrell... <laughs> Coach a little upset with everybody going and doing the diving, uh, but uh, who cares? We got the out. So one pitch, one out for Isaiah. Isaiah will now pitch foul ball. That was unlucky for number 10. He ducked out of the way and hit the ta back of his bat. So as we, those of you that have been uh, with us before, you know that that is an unfortunate foul ball uh, for the batter. And Isaiah with the next pitch. Third pitch of the at-bat, 62 mile an hour way inside. Um, he's throwing to Kieran. We got Joe at first. We've got Ricardo at second. Jorge short and Gianni at third. Javon in left. Swing and a miss. A 61 mile an hour ball tailing away from the right-hander. Jack in center. And as we've already seen, Jabrell in right. No, and as he comes set on the mound and the pitch, ground ball off the side. Good swing by number 10 there to defend uh, the, the strike zone there. And he fouls it off and he'll live to see another pitch. So Isaiah, who had a brilliant uh, outing a week ago, two innings of wonderful pitching. 59, swing and a miss. Second out of the inning for the Jackrabbits. Um, let's see if he can repeat that. So uh, Isaiah, Isaiah worked a lot in the offseason, including with a little extra coaching, to, to get his pitching to where he wants it to be here. As he's an eighth grader and hoping to make his high school uh, team next year and wants to be a pitcher. Uh, he's got the physical strength to do it. It's just can he repeat over and over again? 60. And that looked like that had a break on it. Maybe uh, glove side. I don't know if that's a cutter. Um, I know Isaiah has been working on a couple of different pitches. Maybe I'll go ask his dad here a little bit later what he can throw effectively. But whatever that was, it was a beautiful pitch. And there's a shot up the middle. Jorge will pick it up, and he'll throw it to first. And they will get the runner out by a step. So in a 1-2-3 inning for Isaiah, you could hardly script it any better. Mom and dad over here celebrating, uh, you know, appropriately for the pride that they've got in a heck of an inning. So that is three consecutive innings from Isaiah. Two last week, one this week of, uh, I believe, scoreless ball. So, <laughs> uh, we will see uh, Isai, Jack, Kieran for sure. When those gentlemen get on, the star of the last inning, Isaiah and Jabrell, will be up. So, And then we'll flip the, the lineup over. And then, fingers crossed, we will not lose our um, feed anymore today. Now I finally got all my bases back as well. So,
and coming down and beautiful throw. This is the shortstop there. So Isai now will be ready to step in as soon as the umpire is. The umpire still, uh, I think, looks like hydrating here behind off to the plate. You can't really see it, but the amount of space in foul territory here is uh, is silly. We were joking before that uh, any any pass ball for sure is a free 80 feet of any base, but you might also be able to build a... Whoa! That ball is roped into left center on a 60 mile an hour fastball, and the pocket radar caught that at a 78 mile an hour exit velocity, so Isai really turning on that first pitch. And so Jack is up. Jack, who had a heck of a weekend, really starting to turn it on in the box. At one point, it slid all the way uh, down in the lineup. But uh, last weekend, or this weekend, the most recent weekend, we had he uh, was able to really turn on the ball and put that ball in the right field. In fact, a couple of balls hit very, very deep. So he's feeling good, I think, about his swing after a, a lot of struggles the first eight, nine games of the season. 62, that ball is outside. Jack swinging the bat like a lumberjack. Swing and a miss at a 68. 58, excuse me, 58. That was a little off speed. Nice change of speed by number 12 to get Jack out in front. Jack pulling his head and missed that ball. Strike one. Isaiah now going. And a ground ball down the right field side. So I'm not sure if someone missed a, uh, a sign there. You generally don't want to be swinging and running in case you get doubled up there. But 2-2 two -two now, so you're not going to take the bat out of Jack's hand and ask him to take. Let's see if Isaiah goes anyway, or maybe there was a hit and run. It's pretty sophisticated for our team. And Izzy will motor into second without a throw on the uh, outside ball three. I'm sorry, that's Isai, not Isaiah. Sorry, that's Isai over there. Ooh, and that ball hits Isai right in the square in the back. Call, he hasn't called timeout yet, but being tough, he, you can't see it. The ump is right in the way of my camera. Um, he did not call timeout, and uh, so wasn't given it. Jack's still in the box, even though nobody else is ready. Three balls, two strikes, the payoff pitch on its way. Let's see if Isai now... Foul ball, straight back at the camera. And he's side with a very big lead out at second. Trying to draw a throw, it looks like. And that's going to be a 62 mile an hour fastball outside a little bit. Jack drops his bat. Those of you that went around two years ago, three years ago, uh, Jack got himself in trouble uh, when he walked and would kind of make a big deal out of flipping the bat. So now he just drops it right on home plate. In steps Kieran. So runners on first and second. Kieran. Swing and a miss a 61 mile an hour pitch. Nice pitch by number 12. Kieran had a couple of hits this weekend, which was good for him. Swing and a miss at a 59 mile an hour pitch right down the middle. So Isai still with a lead out at second, but he's the lead is so big he's making the second baseman cover, so that's good. That ball is 63, but a little high for Kieran's liking. Two balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss, a 63 heater. 12 blows it right past Kieran there. And Isaiah will now come up. Jabril in the on deck circle. Go, four, four. Ooh, down the right field line and off the facade of the Cherry Creek Bruins dugout. Oh, 
Next pitch in the dirt, 59 miles an hour. And Isaiah wisely takes that. Ooh, just a little below the knees. Solid take by Isaiah there. Oh, right down Colfax, 63 mile an hour fastball. Excellent pitch on a 2-1 count from the pitcher. To give us a 2-2 count. Ball is in, uh, the pitcher now in control of this account. Can do what he wants here. And Isaiah will take a strike three on the outside corner with his bat on his shoulder. And in comes Jabrell, the man who made the catch there in the bottom of the first in right field. He now steps in with a chip on his shoulder and a runner on first and second. With two down, runners will be going on contact. Jabrell so desperate to to make contact here. Uh, this weekend he was swinging early, in fact. We were seeing kids throwing as hard as this kid in the low 60s, and um, we, uh, and Jabril was swinging early, so hopefully he can time it up a little bit here. Jackrabbits did leave two on in the top of the first. Oh, and there was that, I think, curve ball or change up, uh, but it was too high at 56. So leaving two, run, two runners on in the top of the first. You don't want to do it again here in the top of the second. A 3 nothing lead at 13U is uh, not one you can depend upon. And swing and a miss at a 63 mile an hour pitch. Right in on the hands, well placed by the Cherry Creek Bruins, pitcher number 12. Oh, and then he corks that ball down the third base line. It's going to score Esai. And Jabril picks up a well-earned, well-deserved RBI. Isai picks up the bat. And Joe now will, um, oh, we're waiting for, uh, looks like we got time from coach here, uh, Cherry Creek Bruins coach. Number 12 has been in and around the uh, plate the whole time and can't fault him for his pitching. He's been throwing strikes. Uh, we've just been able to hit them where they ain't. Sometimes we hit them where they are. Looks like he's getting... Uh, looks like he has been replaced, so we'll have a new pitcher on the mound for the Cherry Creek Bruins after four runs are in for the Jackrabbits, and runners will be on first and second when we resume. Number four, another right-hander. We'll see if he's in around 60 miles an hour like his colleague and teammate. I guess they're not really colleagues at this age, are they? They're just teammates, aren't they? So again, apologies for the technical uh, uh, technical issues. Uh, hopefully, you're all able to find us again. We, uh, I don't know, we just I lost all my cameras and internet. So when the feed goes down, YouTube cuts me off. So there's that. The warm-up throws are a little bit slower, but we'll see if those are. Uh, similar to the actual pitches that we will see when Joe steps into the box. In the meantime, I'm gonna go grab a burrito. I'm a little famished, didn't eat a whole lot today, so huge shout out to my wife, Sarah, Teddy's mom, who packed me three burritos. Although, pro tip, uh, if you have hot burritos and Hershey Kisses in the same lunch bag, the Hershey's, Hershey Kisses quickly become Hershey syrup, so, uh, just a, just a pro tip for all you out there who are thinking about having burritos and Hershey Kisses in your lunch bag tomorrow. Don't do it. Keep them separate. Uh, otherwise, you will just have a sloppy mess all over the inside of your lunch bail. Well, and that's it. I talked my way through lunch. So Jack, or sorry, so Joe will be stepping in with runners on first and second. We've got Jabrell on first and Jack on second. And that ball is high and away. 59 miles an hour. So Jack kind of, from the camera view, getting right in behind the, the ump there. But trust me, he's he's out there at second. Nice pitch, 58 mile an hour, and that one had a little bit of a break to it. So I'm not sure if 
Joe swings, he's going to do much with it anyway, but it was a really nice pitch. It's good pitching we're seeing from Cherry Creek, which I appreciate. Oh, Joe uh, peels away from a 51 mile an hour curveball that didn't curve. Sat through a lot of games uh, where we had a hard time. He's had a lot, of, a lot of walks, and that is not happening today, which I appreciate. Next pitch. 59 on the outside corner. Peyton with black today, number four. It is 2-2 count, so Joe now got to be swinging on whatever's close. That one is not. Ball gets back to the backstop. As I think we mentioned, the backstops here are huge. Uh, I don't know if I said the joke we said, but you could put a single family uh, residence between home plate and the backstop. So everybody's gonna go 80 feet uh, every time there's a pass ball. And so that takes us to a full count. Jabrell with a 35 foot lead from second. And Joe will take ball four, off he goes. So, Jorge now steps in with the bases loaded. Two down. And two down. So there is a force at any base. And so Jorge definitely needs to get this ball into the outfield. And he hits a ground ball down the left field line and foul. Okay, so Jorge was a little ahead of that one, pulling it down the left field line. Let's see if he make some adjustments here. They're moving up in the box or slightly waiting. And from the windup, number four brings the next pitch. And Jorge hits that ball straight up. Catcher's underneath it. And for the second inning in a row, Jack Rabbits leave uh, a lot of base runners and pop out foul for the third out of the inning. So uh, well played by the catcher there to get that final out of the inning. And good relief from number four. He did give up a walk, but let no runs in. And with that, the Jackrabbits go to the bottom of the second with a 4 nothing lead. And now I'm going to try to eat my burrito. Don't spend two hours talking to yourself like I do. That's suspicious. Just checking in with Mark on uh, Isaiah, and Isaiah does throw a curveball. Uh, Mark, being a little superstitious, has not moved since Isaiah's last uh, inning on the mound. 
At 60 mile an hour, that definitely had a run, a glove side run on it. I don't know if Isaiah's throwing that cutter on purpose or not, but it is definitely. Oh, we just learned the cutter? Okay. So there you go, throwing the cutter for a strike will be uh, super important because now he can throw a fastball. That one, unfortunately, a little low. But seeing the, the cutter is uh, like a curveball, though it doesn't tend to drop for, uh, horizontal. It just stays on the same plane, but moves away from the batter. And the ground ball right up the middle. Nice shot by number 13 for a single. Definitely, if you can turn on it, you can uh, put that back in the outfield as number 13 for Cherry Creek did. So Cherry Creek, uh, known as the Bruins. The Bruins are a, um, I, I had to Google this, but the Bruins are a bear, specifically the European brown bear, featured prominently in many fairy tales. The ball go, or the runner goes, and we'll have a throw down, and it is not in time. But beautiful throw and tag by our batter, or by our catcher, and by our second baseman there. So he just had a good uh, Cherry Creek Bruin had just a good uh, jump on on that pitch. As he comes set, one second and throws that ball outside. It's number 17 here for Cherry Creek, uh, taking a 2-0 count. Uh, let me finish up the Bruins. So Bruins are the European brown bear, often featured in fairy tales, and we know this because they were in the uh, G Brothers Grimm and Hans Christian Andersen, both written originally in Dutch. Dutch for brown is Brun, and so that's how the brown bear uh, was named, and that's how the Bruins came to us. That ball goes to the backstop, and they might have a play at third. That ball not in time. Good break by number 13 to get over there and to slide. So now we have, uh, we have kind of cells in the pickle here. Isaiah has gone 3-0 to number 9. Uh, no, he went 4-0, sorry, he just walked that runner. Um, and so we've got a runner on first and third. Nobody down. And number 19 steps in for Cherry Creek. Now is a 60 mile an hour pitch is a little high. Let's see if Isaiah can come back here. Swing and a miss. Ball gets passed. And there's going to be no play at home because, again, there's just so much space uh, that we just can't. <laughs> it gets passed. It's just going to be a free base for everybody. So it's going to be vital that Kieran and Isaiah are able to communicate here and keep the ball in front of Kieran, regardless of whether it's a curve, a fastball, or a cutter. And that ball is hit out to right field. Oh, and we had a dive and a miss for um, for Jabrell, but I like to see the effort. And that ends up being a single, so no harm done on the on the dive. The runner scores. So the Cherry Creek Bruins are able to complete their first run of the evening, though almost certainly not be their last. Okay. So Izzy with the first earned run of the evening. And a 59 on the outside corner here to number one. This is a nice pitch. Ooh, nice catch back here. And that does keep the runner at first on whatever that was. Oh, wait, it's 14? Oh, right, because the because we had the pass ball and the thing. So apologies, 4-2. So that's the second Tim. run for Izzy was the, on the fly ball to right. And a ground ball to our shortstop. He throws it to first and it's not in time. Joe knocks it down No. And the runner is uh, safe at first and safe at second. So now we're going to have runners first and second. Nobody down. Nobody down. And I think you can definitely call this a rally by the Bruins. The Jackrabbits need to respond here with some good leather. And Isaiah's got to 
stay in and around the, the strike zone here. Can't be giving up base on balls. And play at third on the, oh, bang, bang play at third, had number 19. Guys, we got to have good base runs. The catcher's good. Come on. Yes, coach. Single drive with two. Now here you go, kid. Oh, and we're going to get a, some defensive changes here. So Aaron will take right. Jabrell will take first. Uh, and he will take um, Joe's first baseman's mitt. And then you'll see Joe march across the uh, infield here. He's on his way to go warm up, I think, as he would be the relief pitcher for Isaiah, who has not been able to put a, uh, to, to get an out this inning after the Bruins have now plated two runs and have two runners in scoring position, including a tying run. And that ball is, Comes right back to Kieran, so Kieran with a really heads up play to put a hand on that. Number 19 does not make the move in from uh, third. Oh, three balls and no strikes. Isaiah's got to throw a strike here. Beautiful, takes a little off, 59 mile an hour pitch. Uh, I suspect number four was taking all the way there. That would be the prudent baseball move, so. Don't fault him for taking that strike, but now Isaiah with the next pitch in the dirt, and he loads the bases, ladies and gentlemen. So now the go-ahead run for the Bruins has just gone down to first. Base is loaded. Number 15 about to jump in there. And 15 ready to swing, got right into the locked-in position. Swing and misses 62 right at the letters. So 15 a little behind that pitch, going to need to step back in the box or swing a little bit sooner. Chooses to stay in the same position in the box, so look for him to swing a little bit sooner on those fastballs. Let's see if Izzy comes back with another one. Izzy throws that one right past everybody off the hard, uh, hard plank. I think it's plastic, but it might be wood of the, uh, of the backstop and bounces right back to Kim. So, other than being a ball, no damage done. Uh, Isaiah with a 59 mile an hour curveball that was high and away. Let's see if we get a we get a step off here. Looked like there was some confusion on the signs. Kieran got a last minute. Suggestion from coach, which I think allows Isaiah to reset. And they throw to third. Yeah, definitely some confusion about what coach wants here. There was an assumption that the, it was supposed to be a throw to third. I think they're calling a, 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 like a, a change up or a curveball. Uh, that's what they wanted, a 62 mile an hour cutter. Is that what that was? So now we need need the third strike here. Gonna be crucial to get at least an out here while we still have the bases loaded and uh, force at any base. Oh, and that ball gets away. Runner does not come in. Izzy does cover. Would have been close, honestly. That ball hit the fence and died. Kieran went back to go get it. Um, but 19 has to read that well, otherwise uh, if he doesn't have a good break, he could end up getting making the first out at home, which is a absolute sin baseball. Strike three, 58 at the knees and inside corner. Whew. Big deep, big deep breath here from your commentator on that one. Number 12 is going to step in. And runner, or so our infield first and third is in even with the bag for a play at the plate. The middle infield is uh, at double play depth. That was a good pitch, a little outside. I think he was hoping to get maybe a first pitch swing and a miss. 
Now behind, Izzy's got to bring the next one here for a strike. Let's see, he does not. He bounces that in front of the plate. Karen with a beautiful block there. Got down on his knees, used his chest to drop the ball right at his, right at his feet. Isaiah working really quickly here. He tends to work better if he takes a little bit of time. And a shot right over Jorge into left center field. That will score one. That will score two. Uh, not a great throw from the, from the outfield and that ball will be cut off and runners will be at second and third on a really well struck double by, was it number 12 I believe. So hit them where you, hit them where they ain't. It's exactly what happened. So as I mentioned, a four nothing lead is not defensible at this age and uh, Cherry Creek Bruins showing that here in the bottom of the second. And that's a curve that didn't break. Ball high. Four four, right? Come on! Go on! And a ground ball down the left field line and foul. So number three well tuned in to Isaiah's speed. And there are Runners on second and third, so the only force play currently is first. I think the Jackrabbits do take a run for an out on a ground ball. And it goes right over uh, Jabrell's glove at first. And there's a stop. The ball skips away, and the runner will score for a second run. And on a what ground ball to first, we end up ground ball to first, we end up with a double. So that was unfortunate because um, Isaiah probably got the double play there on a hard hit ground to first who could pick that up and then step on first and throw home, but unfortunately does not. That ball is all the way to the backstop and we might have a play at third and he's in there safely. So runner, again, any pass ball is a free base, so runner will take third. That one was a little bit closer than usual, but same result. And that ball gets away. It is off the hard stop, hard backstop. And there's no play at home as a runner from third. Thought better of that. <laughs> nice stop from Karen on ball three. 3-0, three -oh, so. Isaiah really struggling to throw consecutive strikes here and to, to be uh, as consistent as he was last week and in the first inning even. And that ball gets away and that will certainly be a free, uh, free base for everybody involved. Ball four, number 10 will take first, number three crosses the plate. And that is about all um, I think for Isaiah who puts the ball into coach's hand. He's ready to take himself out. That ball is going to be transferred into the glove of Joe. And on a seven to four, I should go check game changer and see what the score is. Um, let's see, seven to four, as I said, seven to four. So a lot of earned runs for Isaiah in that inning. And Joe will step in. Joe pitched, uh, I think this weekend, if I remember correctly, and struggled to find the strike zone. So hopefully his form returns. I'm not telling on anybody, but certain people who should be watching this game are sending me Instagram reels. How can you be watching the Jackrabbits and be on Instagram to send me Instagram reels? Come on now. That's uh, just calling you out, person that, that knows it's you. Uh, all right, that was a that was a something, but it's a warm up, so it doesn't matter. And we'll see what Joe brings here in a few pitches. I'm gonna have a little more burrito. Yeah. 
a new pitcher, uh, sorry, a new batter here for Joe, number 18 for Cherry Creek Bruins. He will step in with a no-no no count. And we had a fake bunt, but Joe wasn't on the, we got timeout. I don't know what's happening. Are we ready to play ball? Yeah. And we're going to step off. We didn't, yeah, I wasn't in position, and then we had everybody stepping off, and now we got bunt or fake bunt. We got Jabrell holding the runner on at first. And there's a strike one, and that ball is to the shortstop side of the bag and a little bit uh, off. So, unfortunately, no play at second. Time? Do you need time? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the who stepped away for half inning just came back in and said, wait, 7-4? Them? What happened? What's going on? So, we uh, we have a timeout. It's like, I don't want to focus on the pitch really hurt. Uh, yeah, it looks like, okay, it looks like he's fine, so I'm going to zoom in. looks like the uh, runner, when he slid into second, may have hit the bag a little hard or a little little late, maybe. And he's um, kind of leaning on an ankle or indicating that there's an ankle uh, injury. Now he's walking it off. You can see there on he doing a little jump. I think he slid into the bag a little late, so jammed his uh, ankle. So now he's now he's looking now he's looking healthy again. Just had to rub a little dirt on it and get a little time out there. Coaches are walking off the field, so I assume that all is well. We do have a conversation going on here at, uh, between the field ump and the third base uh, third base coach. Seems a little extended. I'm not sure what they're talking about, but probably trading recipes, I imagine. You know, that amazing uh, Pad CU you saw on TikTok. I'm sure they were sharing sharing the recipes for that. Anyway, runner on second now. Joe will face the Bruin with a one strike count. And a ground ball right up to short. Who picks that up? Throws over to first. Jabrell with the squeeze. And that is two down now. Runner does, the batter does move the runner over. So. He showed bunt to begin with, and after a stolen base and got the guy to third, you know, you really can't be too upset with that um, if you're the Bruins to get two bases for an out. Joe now with the next pitch. Here's a ground ball to third base. Jorge, uh, sorry, Gianni steps, waits on it, throws to first, and a stretch from Jabrell at first. A good, uh, was that a four pitch inning, I think, uh, for Joe to finish off the bottom of the second, but not before the Bruins do a whole host of damage to your Colorado Jackrabbits, putting up a seven spot in the top, I'm sorry, the bottom of the second of our doubleheader tonight. We will face the Bruins again at 7.30-ish. Uh, we are about an hour in. Keith, really, you do read my mind. That's amazing. Uh, Gianni, Teddy, and Aaron will definitely be up, and then I'd hope to see Ricardo, Javon, Chris, Isai, and Jack, if not more. Here as we go to the top of the third. So Jackrabbits are visitors here in the 5.30 game. They will be uh, home in the 7.30 game. Again, AYL, mid-league, midweek league. Uh, coach approaches this very much like I found out the uh, col college teams approach their midweek game. So kind of for all the marbles, you play all out, uh, best kid in the best position on the weekends and then the midweek game is a chance for folks who are battling for positions or battling for spots in the rotation like Isaiah is or, or Joe are uh, to show their mettle. Um, I was watching the Arkansas Razorbacks game last night against Texas Tech and ladies and gentlemen if you are not watching uh, college baseball you are missing out on just some phenomenal baseball. It certainly isn't the pros but it is really a lot of fun. Um, there's a lot more scoring too because they just basically look like these kids out here but you know Young, men, young men's bodies and four or five years older. Anyway, Alabama was playing Texas Tech. It is a SEC versus Big 12 matchup. So the Arkansas, of course, wanted to win, but they had a bunch of uh, folks playing in different positions and batting in different spots in the order so that they could get that extra uh, practice for their weekend games, where they're now obviously in the middle of um, conference play in the SEC. Arkansas did lose to Alabama over the weekend, uh, two out of three, and thus dropped out of the top spot. If you'd like to track down the number one college baseball team in the nation, you wanna, you're gonna wanna find Texas A&M. 
they play amazing baseball. They put up like 18 runs a game, so just a lot of fun to watch. Gianni in now for the first pitch of the top of the third, which is 52 and in the dirt. Nice 50 mile an hour pitch there that dropped in, but a little late. Cross the cross the uh, the plate high. So Gianni with really good plate discipline there. Swing and a miss at a 59 mile an hour pitch. So good change of speed by the pitcher number four to go from 50 to 59, almost 20 percent faster. And next pitch, oh, 51. So this has remnants of our weekend championship game against Eaton where that pitcher never hit above 55 miles an hour but flummoxed our boys by changing speeds and changing location. And a ground ball. Foul down the left field line. And Gianni now will step back in here in the top of the third, facing two strike count. And he's hit, another hit by pitch, number 19, never afraid to wear it, and he will take first. So, probably not how he'd like to get there, but nonetheless, 80 feet is 80 feet. Teddy now getting a sign. Gianni now hopefully got his sign, so the boys know what they're doing. Teddy already choked up on the hype fire. There's a big hole on the right side, and the right fielder playing almost right center. So that ball is away. Oh, and a throw down to first. Snap throw by the catcher. I did not see that coming, but good heads up play. Gianni back. <laughs> next, or uh, hopefully, next pitch to Teddy. Teddy hits that ball into right center, right where they were playing him, and he drops it. And Gianni might get out at second because he did not go halfway on that throw. So Teddy into first uh, on a pop fly to right and Gianni moved to second. And that uh, view, that second base view is courtesy of Teddy's great uncle Ron who just texted me with much concern after my last story. I don't know if it was the Bruins or Arkansas, but he wanted to know if I was getting enough sleep. The answer is not really, but uh, uh, what's sleep? when you can watch some baseball. Next, first pitch to Aaron. Aaron hits that ball in the same spot, that ball tailing away again. That ball's gonna drop and gets past the, the right fielder. It looks like we're gonna score one. Teddy will have a stop sign at third and Aaron in with a double. So I just think everybody should use Aaron's bat. It has all the hits in it. Aaron just absolutely crushing it um, with that. Uh, new bat, but honestly, it's the new approach. It's the swing at the first strike. It's the it's the uh, keep your head down and, and drive with your hips that are really working for Aaron. The bat's just bonus. In steps Ricardo, and Ricardo, I believe last time up did not re not get on base. I'm gonna go check the uh, go check the box score here, and he'll take ball two, 59 down below. So Ricardo 0 for 1 today. And that ball bounces is 58 in the dirt. Catcher pops the mask. Teddy had already retreated to third. Oops, I need to put the third base picture in a picture up, excuse me. So tying run out at second base. If Ricardo can put the ball into the outfield again. Pretty strong breeze blowing from left to right. So all those pop flies into right field um, are a little unfair to the right fielder because they just keep blowing and blowing and blowing. So now, now we have bases loaded. Javon will step in to the box. And there's no down, nobody out. So Jackrabbit's here in the driver's seat. That ball sneaks away, but not far enough for Teddy's liking. He scampers back. Coach Nick giving him a talk 
about what, what they're seeing, how to read that pitch. And we got a timeout for the first baseman here to tie his shoe. I promise he's right there tying his shoe. And it looks like infield in for a play at the plate. Ball popped off to the right. Yeah, as I see it, the Bruins have their entire infield in. If they can get a better look here. Yeah, everybody's in, so it looks like they're going to go for a play at the plate in the event that there's a ground ball in the infield. Now, having the infield in does mean that they've shortened it up and it's decreased the amount of space that they can cover. Oh, 49, nice pitch right there. Javon could not do a thing with that. you got to tip your helmet to number four for that nice pitch. So Javon with a two-strike approach here, legs wider, choking up on the bat a little. Got that Marucci in his hands. And he used, does not use it for strike three on a beautiful curve again, 59. So two consecutive curves from number four for strikes. And those things are going to happen. So number nine, Isai steps in. Isai, who had a solid stroke uh, in the second inning, I believe it was. Oh, sorry, no, it's Chris. My bad. It's Chris. Isai is in the on-deck circle. Here's Chris. Base is loaded. There's another curve. He's just number four throwing curves for strikes. Our boys may not have any idea what to do now. Next pitch. That's a fastball, and that ball is hit into deep right. And Teddy will tag up, and the runners will, and so he'll cross the plate safely, and Chris gets a sacrifice fly. And what we got there was, let's see, oops, my bad. We got first and third with a runner on second also tied up, tagged up, excuse me. So Ricardo at first and Aaron at third. And now Isai steps in. Isai, who did have that hot shot through short and third his last time. Oh, and a throw is thrown away. And Aaron will now come home. And we'll see if there's a play at third for Ricardo, who goes in head first. And Jackrabbit's making the most of that overthrow. Again, just crazy amount of, of foul territory here. That, I mean, at most that should have been, everybody goes one base, but because there's that giant, I mean, giant amount of space, just kept rolling and rolling. So with that, we tie the game. 7-7, we go top of the third, 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, again, we need to put up more runs than, than that, of course, because Bruins uh, obviously show they can put up a lot of runs in an inning, but good, good, good response by the Jackrabbits here. Coach called timeout to go talk to his infield, and I think it's more of a keep your head up, boys, we're playing just fine pep talk than a specific concern. Uh, than a specific concern about one or the other. Uh, I think it's a, uh, boys, it's a Wednesday night and you could be home doing algebra. Instead, you're playing baseball. Like, priorities, boys. Uh, I heard this coach giving a pep talk to his team as I was setting up earlier, and it was just, it was all the right messages. You know, you'd love to see that from the coach out there saying, look, we're going to play hard, we're going to play to win, we're going to have fun. Uh, baseball is a game. Don't forget that. And so, Nice pitch for number four who responds to whatever that inspirational message was from coach with a beautiful 59 mile an hour fastball over the outside corner that uh, Isai couldn't do much with. That ball, 49, didn't quite have the break on that curveball. So now the infield back, willing to concede a run for an out. Nice stop by the catcher there. With Ricardo on third, Ricardo is a pretty aggressive base runner, so I could see him uh, making a break for it. But he has got out at home at least once this year. Um, so maybe a little chastened, maybe a little concerned, because you hate to make an out at home, especially taking the bat out of Isai's hands. Nice stop there again by the catcher to keep that ball from getting away. So Isai's sitting pretty here with a 3-1 count.
time. Let's see what the next pitch gives us. Ball four away. And Isai will take the base on balls and go to first. So Jack now looking for his sign, not seeing anything from Coach Nick. So I guess we're going to have just a little, oh, no, never mind, Coach Nick doing some signs now. I believe he may have just done the Macarena. I'm not sure, if that of a hokey pokey. Whatever it is, Jack has a sign. Isai has the sign. Going to throw to third. And Ricardo is back safely. Isai goes, swing and a miss by Jack. Jack was way ahead of that 53 mile an hour. I don't know if that was a fastball or if that was a changeup, but whatever it was, it was a strike. It was nice. Jack dances out the way of that one a little bit. 1-1, one, one, thank you. And no, no, still nobody down. Oh, two down. Oh, yes, we've had some strikes. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not saying this to... Oh! That foul ball right off our catcher's, looked like maybe his leg or something there. He's stretching now. Next pitch. And it's hooked into right center field. I like the sound of that. And we're going to run one home. We're going to run two home. So both runners score that were in scoring position on that single from Jack. And ladies and gentlemen, that puts your Jackrabbits ahead here as we go to the top of the third and moves the lineup, uh, lineup down further here to see Kieran with Isaiah in the on-deck circle. So we'll see if Kieran got two outs now. Jack doesn't go. Kieran swings and misses a 60 mile an hour fastball. And that curveball doesn't curve. It's 49. And, oh, a fake throw down. Got me and Jack both faked out there. The catcher doesn't want to go on to be a pro catcher. He could be an actor maybe with that nice fake throw. Jack in on the move. And the ball is skipped home, so there's no play. Jack safely at second. So number four here does have two outs. And throws that pitch outside. 3-1. Kieran with some of the highest on-base percentage on the team uh, due to his strike zone awareness. Being a catcher, he obviously knows what the strike zone is. A lot of plate discipline. So let's see if he gets a free base on ball here. Oh, swing and a miss. And a put throw to third. Uh, and the ball's dropped. I think they had him, but it looked like the ball got dropped there. And so Jack now a mere 80 feet away. And a full count, two down. So a big payoff pitch here to Kieran. Wide stance, up a little off the knob. Swing and a miss, a 48 mile an hour curveball, ladies and gentlemen. That was all she wrote for that inning. But not before the Jackrabbits do recover and put five across, if my math is correct. And Jackrabbits up nine, seven. You go to the bottom of the third. So we've got to have a good stop by Joe here against a Bruins team that showed they can definitely run the bases and hit the ball. So we'll see how the Jackrabbits respond in the bottom of the third. Ladies and gentlemen, also, make sure you like and subscribe and hit that bell. We're almost at 200 subscribers, and just purely to satisfy uh, my own midlife crisis, it'd be great if we could get 200 subscribers. So tell your friends and neighbors who obviously care tons about 13U baseball in the Denver metro area. What you won't get this weekend, though, if you subscribe, is you won't get any notifications about baseball games because we have the weekend off. There will be no Jackrabbits baseball. Jackrabbits are on a uh, three three weekends a month kind of rotation through July. As such, we will uh, only be um, or we'll, we'll be off next week uh, for all of the family. Uh, we're all pretty excited about that because we all have lots of chores that have not been done. 
heard lots of the dads talking about the lawn and, and spring lawn care that they're going to do this weekend. I've got two soccer games for my eight-year-old, nine-year-old, excuse me. Golly, they grow up so fast. Um, and uh, so we'll be out in the, it's projected to be 43 degree weather. So that would be a lot of fun. Uh, but soccer will go on. And uh, we'll be back next Wednesday for more AYL League Baseball. Another doubleheader, of course. And I believe we do this all the way through May, and then at the very end of May is the AYL playoffs. Um, and uh, that'll be a different... Uh, uh, actually, I don't know if it's a different night. I think it's a different night, but anyway, it doesn't matter. If you like, subscribe and ring that bell. You'll find out whenever we're playing, whether it's a Wednesday or whether it's some other time. So, um, we've got... Uh, the ump coming over to check the score, and we've got Garrett providing it, even though Garrett is like not the uh, official scorekeeper. So, hopefully, he gave him the right number. Joe, with a few more warm ups, and we will be ready to start this inning. Uh, sorry, not start this inning, go to the bottom of the third. And ladies and gentlemen, we go at number 17 here. We'll take uh, his spot in the box. We've got a breeze whipping up. Uh, while I was about 65, I think, at game time, uh, it is rapidly dropping here with this wind. And a ground ball to our shortstop who picks it up and throws it to first and gets him out by a step. Number seven, 17, though, very fleet of foot, made a real play of that, so good job. One pitch, one out. Uh, and somebody over there has a mic for Jerry Peak Bruins to uh, do uh, walk-up announcements for number 13 here. So that's kind of fun. I hope they keep that up. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of walk-up music. It disrupts the flow of the game. But uh, I like a microphone announcing who's batting. That's uh, super helpful for me so I know what number to call out. And that ball is hit foul down the left field line. So my weather app tells me it's only 63, but I think it's lying because everybody here is in a... A uh, couple of layers already. So Joe now agreeing to the sign that his catcher has given him, Kieran in this case. Next pitch, ball bounces in at 48. Gianni at third, Jorge made that nice play at short. We got uh, Chris now at second, and Jabril continues to anchor first while uh, Joe is on the mound. We In right, we've got Aaron still. Jack in, oh sorry, that's not Jack in center. That is Javon in center, I think. And in left, Teddy way in left, currently just looking at the moon or something. I'm not sure what he's doing. That ball bounces at 58. Ump calls out 3-1. So now we not got to have a strike here from Joe. Joe struggles with a pretty common ailment for most uh, young pitchers which is he tries to overthrow, and in doing so changes the slight 
uh, release point and then spikes the ball on the ground. So that last pitch for a strike to make this a 3-2 count was um, 56 and over the plate. And you notice the 58 ball bounced in the, in the dirt. So just a slight difference of a couple miles an hour trying to oomph it a little harder and uh, you end up spiking the ball. So Joe now with the payoff pitch. That ball gets away from Kieran all the way to the backstop for ball four. So number 19 took it to six pitch, seven pitches that at bat, turned himself a three pass to first. Oh, no one, no one announced number one. Number one is now up. And the next pitch, number three gets past Kieran, and the runner will take first. Sorry, we'll take second. You guys need a battery? Oh, you got one. The Bruins are live streaming, and I heard them say they were in low power mode, so I was trying to help them out, but they brought their own batteries, smart of them. While I was doing that, it looks like I missed a couple of pitches. What's the count key? 2 0. Okay. Two balls and no strikes, and Coach running out to talk to Joe. Generally not one to run, so must have seen something he really wants to change. Calls out his catcher as well. And that quick chat, and that's all she wrote for that conversation. So uh, the next pitch will be a fastball. I think it's a baseball requirement that the uh, first pitch after a conference with your coach is a fastball. Um, Next pitch. It is fastball at 56, tailing away from number one. So it's a 3 0 count. So, in a strange irony, I am sitting and Keith is standing. That never happens. And a cue ball off the end of the bat goes foul down the right field line. So, number one, way ahead of Joe's pitch there. So, Joe. Has a couple options here. One is try to speed up and blow it past him, or try to throw it again and see if he can't get number one to swing and miss. And he does throw it extra hard there at 59 and in the dirt, and that's a base on ball. And Kieran took that right off the thigh, and he's going to need a little bit of time to work that out. Uh, ump calls time, and Kieran doing a lot of stretching and. A lot of convincing all the adults in his life that he's fine, he doesn't need anything, just leave him alone. In fact, if you just let him play his Fortnite, he would be fine. Sorry, projecting a little bit there. That's what that's what my, my kid says. All right, first and second with only one down. Number four, donning a sweatshirt wisely because it's cold. That ball skips away. Kieran takes a look but isn't able to come up with it. There'll be no play at third. Kieran really mad at himself now at this point, doing... So that was, uh, again, everybody moving on a pass ball, so second and third. So the tying run, out in scoring position, if number four is able to put the ball in the outfield. That's 64, Kieran, good hustle, ball got away. He's acting uh, a little beat up, I think. So, uh, and we got three O. Hey, focus. That ball is hit down the right field line and foul. Thankfully, because man, if that lands, that definitely scores too. So, a long strike for Joe. One that caused me to hold my breath there for a second. Next pitch, no good. Gets all the way to the backstop, goes up like a fountain off the backstop, and Kieran. Two one, all right. A oh, three one, three one. Keith confirms that it's three one, just like Ump said it was. 
It is whatever counts. The ump says it is. Strike, 58 of the knees. So last time Joe struggled in his, in his outing, he had a hard time doing back-to-back -back strikes. And we're seeing that a little bit this inning here in the bottom of the third. Let's see if Joe can get this key strike here. And a ground ball to third base that's foul. So that was a strike, but uh, number four fouls it off. And the wind really picking up here. I even have the wind muff on my mics and I can hear it coming through. And there's a ground ball to short. Who's gonna get him at first? Yes. And Jabrell now with the ball and he throws that ball back to uh, Joe. So two down, runner does advance to third and nine eight. So Jack Rabbits need to do what they need to do to get the out here and not let the tying run from third score. We are at an hour 15 at the beginning of this half inning. So we'll almost certainly have a fourth inning uh, because we are the visitors. Uh, if we bat, then the Bruins are due their fair share at the plate. And a first pitch strike, you like to see that. That was 56 and tailing away from number five, it looks like, maybe 15. I'll have to swing, 15, swing and a miss. Got a sinker, sinking fastball there. So I think Joe got a little bit of help from number 15 here. He's got to take advantage of that help now and throw something in around the zone. That ball is, and we'll see if we have a play at the plate. Oh, Kieran not able to come up with the ball on the ricochet. And that was excellent heads up running by number one to cross the plate and tie the game. So it's a tie ball game, ladies and gentlemen. We played three and Bruins now really in the driver's seat as the home team. Joe going from the windup now. And ooh, foul ball off to the right, makes his on deck teammate pay attention and duck out of the way there. It came off quick. So empty bases, one ball, two strikes, and two down. Joe now from the windup. Joe throws that ball away again. That's really been the pitch, the tailing sliding fastball, I don't, it's, not, it's more like a tailing fastball that has caused Kieran trouble all um, inning. Swing and a miss, 57 at the knees. And uh, what a tough bottom of the inning. The uh, Bruins put two across, tie the game up. We have a brand new ball game going in the fourth and most likely final inning of this game. We will see Isaiah and Jabril, and then the top of the order, which is Joe, Jorge, Gianni, and Teddy here at the top of the fourth. And uh, kind of wishing I brought hand warmers. <laughs> it's going to be very cold by the end of the second game. It's fine now, but by, I know, but by the end of the second game, it's going to be cold. For those of you that follow the, uh, the Rockies, I'm sorry, uh, but they are currently trailing the Phillies seven to six. So it's a little bit of a closer game than some of the other games they've played uh, this season, but I have no doubt that uh, Rockies will do worse as the game goes on. Unlike our Jackrabbits, we put a lot of faith in to put some runs across the board here in the fourth inning. And Keith to the rescue with some hand warmers. So I owe him, making a note of it here, time stamp it on the YouTubes, I owe him two hand warmers from Hot Hands that apparently offer 10 hours of heat, which will be more than enough, but certainly appreciated. Oh, also heads up to Teddy's mom, my wife. Uh, Teddy had like one sandwich, so I don't know how he's gonna eat or when he's gonna eat, but um, if he tells you he's hungry when he's home, it's probably why. So I try to get him to eat between, in, between games.
And Isai will step in here for the first pitch of his at bat, 60 miles an hour. This looks like a new pitcher, number 18. 18's a new pitcher, I think. So that first pitch was a ball, ready for the second pitch of his at bat. Isaiah very quick, so getting him on on a base on balls would be excellent because you'd send him running around the bases freely. Strike on a 58 on the outside corner, nice pitch. And the lights are coming on here. As you can see, it just got darker um, on your screen. That's because the sun is now behind clouds and headed down at this 7 p.m. hour here in your Mile High City. Oh, that is corked into right center. Nice. The, the first uh, right fielder gets un, uh, in front of it, and good play by the right fielder there to get the ball in quickly. Um, and Isaiah now, like I said, very, very swift, will almost certainly be sent uh, to run around the bases here and see if we can't get uh, a go-ahead run. As we get closer to an hour 30 of this game, Again, we only have an hour 45, so this will be the final inning. And Isaiah in safely. And number 18 returns to the mound with the ball. Anyway, as we get to the hour 30, this is an hour 45 time limit, so we won't start any more innings after that hour 45, which means this will be the final inning. Was he, somebody was supposed to go there, because that was, Jabril, Jabril, yeah, Jabril just took a beautiful pitch down Colfax there uh, because he was supposed to seal it. So now, now we're trying to figure out what we're doing. We're hitting away, so hitting away. So Izzy missed his sign to steal, and now you can't uh, you can't ask uh, Jabril to get behind two strikes here. So swing and a miss at a ball above the brim of his hat at 56. And no balls and two strikes to Jabrell. So uh, Coach Paul, rather than Coach Nick, giving signs over to Izzy. Not sure if Isaiah was looking at the wrong swing and a miss. And Isaiah gets in there safely, but Jabrell does strike out on three straight pitches. I was so over eager to swing, gave a free one there to number 18, and you really can't do that. So Joe steps in, checks in with the man above. Huge hole on the right side for number 23. And he tries to go that way. Or sorry, 13, not 23. And that ball's fouled out of, way, out of play to the right side. Woo, wind be coming in. My eyes be watering the wind blowing so hard. Here we go. And we're gonna get a play at third. And Isaiah is out on a very nice throw from the catcher to the third baseman. Nice tag by number 12 to get Isaiah. So a leadoff single erased on the base pass. Jackrabbits go from threatening to now uh, having quite the hole to dig out of with a two outs and Joe with the bases empty. And that ball's outside. Keith, what's that? He was caught stealing. He didn't have a very big lead from second, and that was a wonderful throw. Yeah, a wonderful throw from the catcher, but he didn't have enough of a lead to make that safely. Swing and a miss. <laughs> I won't put that on the YouTubes, what's happening. Joe now going to have to do something with this at bat. And he does. He hits that ball down the right field line. That ball is twisting. Oh, it's going to be, it's going to be a long single. Man, I'd hope he's going to turn that into a double. But the right fielder gets to it, retrieves it, and gets that ball into his cutoff. Man, so Joe, doing what he needs to do to extend the inning, gets to first, and two down. And Jorge steps in as we flip the lineup over. We now will see our two, number two, number three, and number four hitters. Joe now does have the sign, so I'm tap his hat. 
the helmet. He's going to go. That ball is a pitch out effectively. And let's see. They got him at second as well. So the catcher, the MVP of that inning for two phenomenal throws. Anytime the ball beats the runner at this age and the, the tag is even close to applied, you're going to get that out call. So those were beautiful throws. Get the ball there right where they need to be and the catch uh, and, the, and the tag applied by, I think that was the shortstop there. So Jackrabbits run themselves out of the top of the fourth. We are at an hour 34. Uh, so we'll see if the Jackrabbits would have to have a really quick one, two, three. We are still tied. I am unsure in AYL what happens in a tie when time's up. Let me go ask Blue. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I have a story for you. 56 mile an hour strike, one ball, two strikes, number 12. Thank you, Keith. That ball is way outside. Jack behind the plate, Jack calling for it outside, but that was too outside. Johnny on third, Ricardo at short, Jorge at second. 
and Jabril at first. In right, we got Isaiah. In center, we got Chris. And left, we got Aaron. I'll tell you my story here, next batter. Swing and a miss. And the boy's happy and whipping that around a little. So, in between innings, Teddy is told that he's gonna pitch. And Joe's probably done. If you'll notice, there's a mound out there. The mound does not allow metal cleats. So Teddy has to use his composite cleats, his plastic cleats. Ladies and gentlemen, where are his plastic cleats? In the car. It's cleats. So the car, yours truly, Mike, his father, who loves him very much, muttering under his breath, saying some words, not fit for YouTube, runs, sprints to the car, opens the car, finds said cleats, who, by the way, I was told to leave them there because he wouldn't need them. Bring them, and they're in a bag. Key, key thing here, they're in a bag. Bring them, he comes to meet me halfway down the walkway. In my anger, I throw it up to him, hoping, honestly, to hit him right in the face. Instead, it gets caught in the wind and lands in a tree. So, I had to climb a tree. This is actually a true story, it happened three minutes ago, just, just now. Here's my ripped up palm to prove it. Had to climb a tree to go get it. What was my anger from? That I was told specifically it was not needed. I could have put it in the trolley. He could have had it right here. He knew going into that inning, and it was only once the team took the field that he was like, oh. I, our, our, I think our sons are very similar. So Teddy, my son, this is Mike. Uh, on the mound, throwing fastballs. Uh, anyway, I had to climb a tree, got out of the tree. I did get a thank you, so that's a sign of something. And in getting out of the tree, I almost dismounted getting my foot caught. So I did, I could have landed on my head instead of landed on my boots, uh, but that wasn't fun. So then, that's why I was a little late to this inning. No, these are, these are roping and ranching. These are not for tree climbing. Um, and dang, I really cut myself on, I got myself good on my finger here. So I, this is a great question from Mark, uh, Isaiah's dad. Um, I went and talked to the, to the umpire, AYL can finish in a tie, can finish in a tie. So this, this game will finish either with a tie or a victory for the Bruins. Because uh, we are over time, I believe. Um, Keith ha Keith's keeping the unofficial timer. Um, it had, it's well, 142. So likely that this goes, or that this is it for time. In like a minute, yeah. And there's only one down, right? So Jack drops that on a ball one. Teddy pitching from a mound, loves pitching from a mound. So let's see if he can get some outs. I think it might be. Yeah, although Joe got the out, so you can hardly be upset about that. But what we lost was the double play there. Foul ball. I'm starting to lose the. Right. So Jack Rabbit's more than willing to concede. 80 feet to number seven there at second base in exchange for an out. Swing and a miss at 57. That ball moving away from number 10. And well, Teddy will tow the rubber again. So interesting, he doesn't generate a lot of extra power coming off the rubber. 51 curve ball doesn't curve. So that curveball's not working for him today. That's gonna to be trouble. Teddy doesn't feel hard enough to blow it past everybody. He relies upon an arsenal of three pitches, a change up, a curveball, and a fastball. What he can do, what he can do very well is place the ball. Joe underneath that pop-up for the second out of the inning. So I guess at hour 43, in theory, if Teddy can get this kid out in like the first pitch, we, 
We, yeah. But it's a school night, and I would be fine with a tie. Because we have to play a second one. I know, but we have to play a second one, and so if this goes into another extra innings, it's just later, and I'm tired. All right, Teddy looking at the runner at second, but no one there to receive that throw. First pitch, ground ball right up the middle. And we throw to first, and Joe gets him. Uh, technically, it's an hour 44. I guess we're doing it none, so we'll see if Coach is going to call this. No, we're going we're gonna to bat, it looks like. So we'll see what Blue says. But ladies and gentlemen, we get another inning to survive. Teddy with a good uh, two-thirds of an inning for relief for Joe. And the Bruins putting on across the plate, matching the Jackrabbits there in the fourth. So we'll see. You'll see the uh, Bruins taking the field. And let's, uh, let's play five innings, ladies and gentlemen. Let's play five innings. And Jorge steps in as we go to the top of five. Jack Rabbit's looking to desperately put one across the board. Hopefully we learned our lesson not to run on this catcher. And, uh, but if not getting ahead of ourselves, we gotta get on base first. So for all of you parents waiting for your seventh or eighth grader, there is a nice smoking shot up the center uh, and dies in the dirt. But I had, must have had some crazy spin on it because the second baseman and shortstop couldn't. <laughs> Jorge safely on first. I swallowed for something funky there, folks. Sorry. Gonna sound a little breathy. That ball gets away, and sorry, doesn't get away. Nice stab by the catcher. Was was outside though. As such, we get a free base down to second, and Jorge now standing in scoring position. And Gianni just absolutely crushes that ball to deep center. It is over the fence again. Two home runs in one game over the fence. This boy is amazing. That is a two-run homer. Two-run homer. <laughs> oh, we get a little celebration from the Jackrabbits on that home run. So Gianni forcing one of the coaches to go retrieve that ball. So Teddy now got to move from being the number four hitter to uh, to being the number one hitter and getting on. So big two run homer. Uh, Teddy now standing to be the winning pitcher uh, because of his relief at the top, bottom of the fourth. 
Uh, but again, getting ahead of ourselves. And Teddy with a nice pop-up. That ball is going to get to the shortstop, who's underneath it, and he is out. So that ball looked like it had some juice to it and then got uh, caught, I think, in the wind there. I really thought that was going to be a, a single. So one down, two runs in, and Aaron steps in. And we got a bunch of folks now in center field, and if you can see them, it's probably too dark. Uh, but tra looking for the ball there in center field. So again, it is two, uh, sorry, 325 down the line. So I have to assume it's at least 325 to dead center where he's hit the ball twice. Clearly well over the fence, I think both times. Ooh, that ball was a curveball or, or ch change up that uh, doesn't go uh, what it needs to do. So 56, ball two. Aaron asking for a little extra time to get set up there. Pants all the way down over the heels of the shoes. And a ground ball to the third baseman who knocks it down. And the throw to first is in time. So solid move by the hot corner there to just knock the ball down. Lift up his pitcher and get that out. So two down with Teddy and Aaron going in consecutive order. Ricardo steps in now. I believe Ricardo is 0 for 1 with a walk today. And now Ricardo steps in, getting more comfortable. Pitch. And that ball is sent deep into left center field. And that ball is one, two, three, half a dozen hops all the way to the fence. And they're going to send it to third. So you'll see him coming to your frame here. And here's the cutoff throw. And they got him. That was beautiful. It got a little uh, pop there on the glove. So an excellent uh, throw from the relay man there to get Ricardo. Uh, but not before the Jackrabbits are able to put two on the board. And they, we now go very quick two-run inning. Uh, um, and now we will take, the Jackrabbits will take the field for the bottom of the fifth. And we'll see if Teddy's back on. Teddy's my son, and so I both want to see him pitch and not see him pitch here at this point. Uh, like to see him out on the mound. He once told me that if he couldn't pitch, he don't, doesn't know if he'd want to play baseball anymore. But uh, the butterflies, they do go, they get released once he's on the mound, especially in a situation where he can't really afford to give up any of the uh, any runs. So infield will be taking their position here. I'll let you know where they're at in a second. Uh, looks like Teddy will be throwing to Isai. Yep, that's how that's going to be. So the battery here is, is Teddy and Isai with Joe on first. And Ricardo will return to second. Jorge at short and Gianni, Mr. Home Run, to third. In left, it looks like we will have Chris. In center, Jack will go from catcher to center field, and in right, we will have Javon. So quite a bit of speed in the outfield. Looks like the coach is going to make sure that we don't see any extra base hits uh, you know, by putting that extra speed in the outfield. So a lot of fun baseball between two very evenly matched teams tonight. This really should be the end at this point, I think. <laughs> uh, we shall... Uh, See when Teddy call it. Teddy loses count a lot, more than seven pitches in warm-up. He just keeps throwing until someone tells him it's time. Uh, and uh, again, we'll be back for the second half of the doubleheader. And at or about 7.30, I think uh, probably unlikely uh, that the, we'll be able to get this inning over and turn around ready to go in the third. So. And the calls for balls in coming down. Also, a gust of wind just took over, took over a couple empty chairs, but a lot of detritus from uh, 
cups and other stuff. Also, for those of you that are uh, following along for the um, the Rockies, they were defeated by the Phillies 7-6 tonight. Never under underestimate the ability of the Phillies to uh, lose. And we've dropped to 55 degrees here at the bottom of the fifth. Number 13 will step in. And Teddy back on the mound for securing the win. We'll see if that curveball is returning to him or not. First pitch is a ball away and skips between Isai's legs. General quiet over the audience here. There's a 58 inside, so Teddy not near the plate here on his first two pitches. Statistically, a base on first batter based on balls at this age comes around and scores, so Teddy's got to get. And there's a Jack's going to get underneath it for a long out. And three pitches, Teddy gets the first out. That one made me a little nervous, but excellent play by our center fielder there, Jack, to come up with that ball. Number 11 will step in for the Bruins. And Teddy will go from the wind up. Not something he's ever practiced off the mound, to my knowledge. Let's see if he if that helps. Now it's 58 and too high. So Teddy's supposed to be getting first pitch strike, first guy out, 15 pitches or less per inning. So he did get the first guy out. Did not throw a first pitch strike here. And there's a 52 curve that uh, didn't kind of just floated in. Wasn't that competitive. So Teddy down quickly 0-2. Gonna have to serve up a fastball here. Everybody knows it, including the Bruins batter. And he gets underneath it down the right side. Out of play and up against the fence there. So no play in foul territory. Where I believe they're building a series of condos down that right field line because there's so much space. And we're bringing the ball back in. Isai scoops up that foul ball. He's going to hand it back to Blue because Blue's already given a ball to Teddy. So two balls and one strike now. Let's see if Teddy comes back with another fastball. I think that's what he's got to do here. And that ball's outside. Isai with a big exhale there. So it's so a 3-1 now. 17 now will be sitting middle in fastball. Teddy, if he's going to bring a fastball here, he's going to have to keep it low and away. And we get a curveball, 51, that's non-competitive. So 17 will now take first. And the tying run will step in for number, uh, number 19 for the Bruins. Let's see if we can get the runner at second, number 19, showing bunt. And we get a strike. And Isai drops the ball on the transfer, so there's no play. And... Runner does take second without a throw. So double play goes away now. Teddy's got to focus on getting number 19 here. Teddy not even paying any attention to the guy on second. A real problem for him. Teddy can convinced he needs to keep coming back with that curveball that's not breaking tonight. It's a 1-1, one, one, Teddy. 1-1-1, one, one, one. yeah, one ball, one strike, one down. Thank you, Keith. And a ground ball. Up the middle, Jorge picks it up and he throws it to first. That will advance the runner to third, and we got a snap throw to throw. G snap throw to third. Gianni does come up with that, and as such, the runner is safe. That was a snap throw from Joe. Uh, we've we've had some luck on, and so now two down, runner at third. So Teddy really just needs to focus on making sure the ball hits the glove and does not get away from Isai. Ooh, a number one. That is wearing it, ladies and gentlemen. I hate to see, hate to see that. Uh, There's a 50 mile an hour curveball didn't curve. Again, tell me if you heard the pattern. Uh, that goes off the helmet. Number one shakes it off. 
big grin on his face as he goes down to first. Uh, I think a lot of a lot of swagger uh, there uh, for him and a lot of cred from his teammates for just wearing that. Now that puts the tying run on first, who is running, swing and a miss, and there's not going to be a play. They're just going to let him go down there. So defensive indifference allows the runner to take second. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We have two outs, tying run in scoring position. Teddy now steps back on the rubber. Mike's heart beating a mile a minute. Butterflies dancing around his stomach. And that ball is looped into center. Jack does not catch it on the dive. That ball gets away. We have the tying run uh, across the plate on a two run single. Not sure that uh, the dive, or does, dive makes a difference or not on that, but uh, we now have the winning run on first. So it is not over for the Jackrabbits, the Bruins showing that they can score runs just as well as we can. Teddy will now have to focus on getting me out here. And with the runner on first, has a small lead. So let's see if we can do this here. And that ball's popped up to first. Ja Joe underneath it. Joe squeezes it, and I believe that's ball game, according to Ump. We end in a tie, so a very exciting fifth inning, but all for naught. We end in the exact same place that we were in the fourth inning, and it is a 11-11. 11-11 tie, ladies and gentlemen, in AYL. So the Cherry Creek Bruins and the Colorado Jackrabbits will each end up with a tie after the first game. We will be back for game two in uh, just a bit. Make sure you've subscribed and hit that bell to get it. Um, and we will, I think if the umps are switching gear, probably need to be at least 10 minutes. Of course, I'll put the URL in the team reach chat, but uh, for Keith and myself, Mike, we are going to call um, the this first game done. So vamos liebres, and we'll see you back in.